Chiefs Kingdom. We are back. We are all chiefed up. I am Steve Williams. I'm here with Mike Williams. And today, we're just going to be talking about the current Chiefs roster and who we think is going to be making this team. Uh, I know that we still got to go through camp and everything, and there's all kinds of possibilities. But we're going to sit here and speculate, and we're going to talk about it. Uh, let's just go ahead and get started into it. Uh, <clears throat> with the offensive side of the ball, Mike, where do you where do you want to start this thing at? Well, at first, I kind of want to look at – we'll start at the quarterback position. That's that's probably the easier one, I guess. But we got to kind of figure out how many players in total they're going to have on this offense. we got to get this down to 53 guys. But you do know, starting off, right off the bat, because we're just going to do offense today. We're going to do defense in the next one. Offense, we'll count, we'll count these three players on both sides. So there's three locks. You got Winchester, the snapper. You have right. Butker, and you got the punter, Tommy Townsend. Those three are on the roster, so we got to get to 50 players. So yeah. I don't know if they're going to do a 25-25 split. I don't know if it'll be like maybe two more on the offense, two more on the defense. We don't know, so that's what we're going to kind of talk about today. So let's just kick it in with the quarterbacks right now, Steve. We got right. Mahomes, we got Bushell, we got Crum, and we got Henny on the roster. Like, who do you think's a lock, and who do you think could make the team? Who do you think's probably getting cut? All right, so they're only going to have two quarterbacks on this roster. The locks are going to be Patrick Mahomes, Chad Henney. I think Michelle will probably hang out on the practice squad. Crew might hang out on the practice squad, or he might be cut. That's where I'm at with it. Yeah, I think Henney probably gets the nod over Bouchel. But to be honest, if I was in their if I was in their spot, I think I would go ahead and keep Bouchel. I think he's probably ready to go. Henney's probably got more experience. But I mean, he's getting up there in age. That's what they need, though. That's what they need in case, like, you know, when Mahomes went out with a knee injury, we had someone there that had, uh, or was that Matt Moore that time? I can't remember. It may have been Matt Moore. But even in the playoffs in the Browns game, when Mahomes went out uh, with a head injury or neck injury or whatever it was, um, you know, you had a reliable, somebody that's been there before, somebody's got some experience. You're not just shoving out a guy that's never played an NFL game before. So right. I think, Hen- I think Henny's your lock. Yeah. They want a calming veteran that could come in, write the ship if it goes bad. And so I'm with you. I think it's Mahomes and Henny. I'm just saying if it was me and I wanted to get younger, Michelle is right there. This may be Henny's last season, to be honest. I think he's on a one year, right? Yeah. It, uh, so, I mean, I, I, yeah. may be in line to come up. But that's not saying bad things about Dustin Croom either. He's pretty good. Right. So, yeah, I agree with you there. I think that this is probably Henny's last year being our backup, but he's definitely going to be it this year. Let's move on to running backs. This is probably the most intriguing, maybe, this or the receiver position uh, as far as the offense goes. But running backs, we've talked about this quite a bit. But now that we've re-signed Jarrett McKinnon, uh, that's definitely, you know, there's some competition there for who's going to make this team and how many running backs are going to make this team. So what are you making of, of it, Mike? This is a good running back room. Um, I happen to think they're not going to, they're going to take at least four I, you, that you have to, you have to take at least four. They could take five. It's very well possible. possible. They could take five. So if I had to say Clyde Edwards, Hilaire is a lock. I know you guys are hating on Clyde, but he is a lock to make this roster. I'm sorry to burst your bubble. He's a lock. Um, If I have to look at the rest of them, I honestly don't know if there's any other complete locks. Like, that's weird to say, but I don't know if there's complete locks. Um, With them re-signing McKinnon back, barring injury, I think McKinnon on a one-year is a lock. I I wouldn't say that. I think Isaiah Pacheco is a seventh round pick signing for a four year deal and having all of his, you know, his, his ability. I pretty much think Pacheco's a luck. So that puts the fourth spot between fleet Davis, who is the uh, UDFA from Maryland, um, Jerry and Ely, the UDFA from Ole Miss, Derek Gore, who is big in chiefs kingdom. We all like Derek Gore and then Rojo. And I would say Rojo more than likely makes the team and that would be our fourth and then you would maybe have a fifth between Ely and Gore I don't know if they want to take a fifth but are you with me that you would probably think it's Clyde Pacheco McKinnon and Rojo right now if you had to guess I think if things stay the same that Clyde's a lock but I know I said in fact or fiction on a recent video that I didn't think there'd be any trades before uh, camp or anything like that but you know i'm i'm kind of been going back and forth with myself on that one i think there could be 
I think that Clyde could be some uh, used in a trade. Uh, because if it was me, if I were Brett Veach, I'd be looking at Chicago. Like maybe maybe you guys can use Clyde and and we can get him in a trade uh, for Robert Quinn or and get that defensive end that everybody really wants. I mean, the dude had 18 sacks last year and he don't want to be where he's at and they're not a good team. So, I mean, maybe you could do that. Also, uh, I, I know that someone put it out there. I can't remember if it was like Sports Illustrated or someone, but they actually said, hey, maybe the Chiefs should take Clyde edwards helaire package him with a fourth rounder, trade him for Saquon Barkley from the Giants, make that happen. Uh, I would do that. I mean, I, I would definitely see if I had any options with Clyde before I just locked him in there. But if nothing happens, Clyde's a lock. Um, but like I said, he could be used as a trade because you've still got your veteran back in Rojo that you could use and Jarek McKinnon. So it wouldn't be a big loss to lose Clyde there and then have some of them younger guys as well. So um, I'm going to go with Clyde, uh, barring the trades. Uh, I'm going to say that Rojo will probably be a lock. I think that they like uh, his experience and what he offers as well. Uh, I mean, he's been on a winning team. He won a Super Bowl. I mean, he's got, you know, got some experience there. As far as the rest of the guys go, I know that everyone loves Derek Gore, and I like Derek Gore, and I think he's a valuable asset, and I think that he's decently reliable after watching him last year have to fill in. Uh, but I think if you want to get younger and you want to uh, see what what's available, you're going to go ahead and get Pacheco in there. Um, and Jaron Ely also could possibly make this team uh, they both offer a lot of the same thing, though, with Pacheco and Jaron Ely. They're both super fast guys. They can both catch passes out of the backfield. They both offer you return, men. So uh, it, it'll be interesting to see what they do. Yeah, I'm with you. But did you did you get all four? What about McKinnon? Oh, McKinnon, I think, is a lock. Um, I'm sorry, I did skip that. I think McKinnon is a lock. I think they waited this long and then suddenly signed him for another one year. That that makes me think that they they want McKinnon. I think that maybe they gave him an opportunity to go elsewhere and get a pretty good contract since he balled out in the playoffs and they thought maybe he could make some money, get a better contract somewhere else. Maybe that didn't work out for him for whatever reason. We would go ahead and sign him back on one year, but I think he's a lock. I think I think he proved last year that he can be on this team. So we're going to lock Clyde barring trade, which that's what we're doing right this second. Clyde, yeah. Rojo, McKinnon, and the fourth Pacheco. Let's do that. I'm gonna. Uh, sorry, Derek Gore fans. Sorry, Derek Gore. Uh, but well, I think we could if, take a fifth. I think if we take a fifth, if we take an extra offensive player, I think Ely and Gore are right there. I think Gore slightly advantage over Ely because of his experience. But I think they're both possibly practice squad. I don't even know if you can do practice squad with Gore. I don't know how that's working with the, the yeah. number of snaps. But if we take a fifth running back, it's going to be between Ely and Gore. Fleet Davis. I mean, he's pretty decent but i don't think they take another uh, a no. rookie in um so for for fullback we're gonna take mike burton burton's a lot no, he's a lot roster. yeah so sure. so that's that's two quarterbacks the fullback that's three we locked four running backs right here so we have locked a total of seven players let's go to tight ends on the roster we have travis kelsey he is a lock um sure. blake bell i believe blake bell is a lock um we have a fella named Vital, Vital. I don't know how he pronounces it. Uh, we also have Jody Fortson. We have Noah Gray. We have Franks, and we have Bushman. Bushman has made some plays and OTAs and stuff that they loved, and I think Franks actually made a few plays too. I just don't see us taking no more to three to four, and I would think we'd probably take three with yeah. this roster and these receivers think- being so good. I think they err on the side of taking more receivers. So who's your third spot, Steve? Is it going to be Fortson? Noah Gray or maybe Bushman or Franks kind of sneak into that third spot with uh, Kelsey and Bell. So I don't know if Bell's an absolute lock, to be honest. So the only thing I do really? like, about, the thing I do like about Blake Bell is, you know, he had a couple years here recently where he was the best blocking tight end in football. So, I mean, you always got that to your advantage. He does have experience. He knows the offense. Uh, he used to be a quarterback, so he can do those uh, quarterback sneaks for us. You get the tight end sneak when, when uh, we don't want to risk Mahomes' knee or anything. Um, 
I don't know if he's a lock for sure. And I'm thinking last year they actually had four on the roster, uh, depending on where they had Jody Fortson slated last season, because before he got hurt, uh, there was still Blake Bell, Travis Kelsey, Noah Gray, and Jody Fortson. And actually, I think that might be where they're at with it right now. I don't know if they'll keep all four for sure, but I wouldn't be surprised if they do. I think Noah Gray is probably making some strides this year. They liked what they saw out of him last year. He just didn't get a whole lot of playing time, but he did get a he got a touchdown against the Raiders. And I mean he got out on the field a little bit. So look, Jody Forson made the team for the just the first time ever last year. Right. That was it. So it's up it's possible they say, Hey, you know, sorry, Fortson. I don't know. That is he happening. a lock? Is he a lock to make it again? I don't know. If and if he is and they only keep three. Are you getting rid of Noah Gray? Or do we just have to bite the bullet and take four tight ends and we take Forts and Gray, Bell, and Kelsey? I just see Bell and Kelsey's locks. I, I, I disagree Fort- with you about Bell being not a lock. He I, does I too much. Yeah, but I think Jody Forts and he's going to be a lock, man. Everybody saw what that kid could do last season and they were super pumped on him and then he got hurt. He but back Jody Forson, Jody Forson doesn't block like Blake Bell and he don't take those gadget plays and he's no, not but Jody Fortson gives you that Travis Kelsey element where he he can you know make contested catches he can create after the catch um so I think he's I think he's a lock man I, I'm pretty sure Fortson makes so, this team no doubt so we take four we'll take Kelsey Bell Fortson Gray and call it four okay so we have seven now we got four tight ends so we're at 11 players let's do offensive line before we jump to receivers, because I think receivers are going to be the most contentious spot. Um, oh, sure. Offensive line. I think um, Creed Humphrey is a lock. Yeah. Um, Smith is a lock yep. at guard. Joe Tooney is a lock. Yep. Uh, Orlando Brown is coming back. He's a lock. Yep. That's four locks. I I obviously, I think Kennard is a lock at this point. For sure. I think Kennard's a lock. I think that's five. So I think we take somewhere between seven and nine. And we have five complete locks. So we have Lucas Niang. We have uh, Wiley. We have Austin Reader. We have uh, Prince Wanagbo. We have Christian. Yeah, we have Christian. Um, Garen Christian. We have Allegretti back. We have uh, Johnson, Caliendo, German, Glacer. Those are some names the Chiefs Kingdom don't really know. These are guys that's not been on the team. So. Out of these guys, how many are we taking besides these other five? Are we just going to take two more? Are we taking three more? Are we taking four more? How are they going to do that? I think, they'll sure. ta- I think they take Niang. I think Niang probably stays. I think he could get cut. You think Niang's a cut? Possibly. Okay. Yeah, for sure. Um, no doubt about it, because I think the Darren Kennard's going to take that right tackle spot. You're looking at your backup there being Wiley. So uh, we'll take Wiley. Wiley's a luck. Yeah, so I'm going to go with our, our set five, counting Kennard as our starting five. They're, they're locks. Uh, okay. Then I'm going to go with Wiley as a backup tackle. Um, I'm going to go with Allegretti as a backup guard. Uh, I think that Ryder will stick around because he offers guard and center ability. So if something were to happen with Creed, uh, you know, Ryder's already been in there snapping to Mahomes before. So yeah. I think those three are probably who you're going to have as a backup. And I think that they might stick with either That's Lucas a- Nyang or Gary and Christian if they go ahead and keep nine, um, just to have an extra tackle, yeah. just in case. We're but, at uh, eight. We're at eight right now. Right. And I'm thinking if they were to stick with nine, I would say it would be another tackle, that it would either be Lucas Nyang or Gary and Christian. So we throw Nyang on... We make it nine linemen, and then we move on to wide receivers. And with wide receivers, they're going to take five or they're going to take six. Okay. So that's our that's our thing. And we're at a total of 23 players, and that includes the three special teams guys. So without the special teams guys, we're at 20. So we could probably take six wide receivers at yeah. 26. And I think that there's a very good chance that they do keep six. So speaking on that, let's just jump into it. Um, okay. I think that McColl, Juju, MVS, uh, and Sky Moore, lock, 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 lock. Okay, those four are a lock. So now we're looking at that fifth and sixth spot. I think Josh Gordon makes the team. I just do. They put him on that futures contract. They are talking about how he actually is acclimated to the playbook now and, you know, the scheme that Andy Reid runs. 
And apparently he was just on fire during OTAs. And he acted like he was a whole new player out there. We know Josh Gordon has the ability. Everyone's seen it before, before all of his trouble. Uh, I think he makes the team, man. I'd almost put a lock on, on Gordon's head there. So barring any injuries, I mean, even if you have an injury to Moore, Hardman, MVS, or Juju, they're all still making the team. Like they, they're just gonna yeah. do it unless it's a horrible injury, which I don't even and- speak about. So we're gonna give it to Gordon. You say Gordon, so you'd have yep. one more spot. Justin Ross, I think it's between Justin Ross, Corey Coleman, or Watson, the the pickup from Tampa Bay. I think because Mahomes had liked him a little bit, but I think it narrow. I think it comes down to probably Ross Coleman and maybe even Darius Fountain. That well, might be your your dark horse there. Somebody I was listening to the other day. Um, can't remember who it was for sure shout out rgr and arrowhead pride uh, i listen to both quite a bit sometimes but uh one of them actually come out and said that they think the lock for that last pick or uh position in the wide receiver room is gonna be Darius fountain like no doubt they were like he's got the you know the experience he already knows the playbook dave tobe loves him on special teams like he's your guy but um I don't necessarily agree with that. I don't think. How it's... do you how do you fit them on the team if if you don't take seven wide receivers? Then how does Fountain get a complete lock with Justin Ross and Corey Coleman and Watson and Powell? How, okay, I, so I think Watson's. I, I don't know. I just don't think he's making the team. I think. Um, I think I'd knock off Bayless, Jennings, Parker, Powell, and Watson. Yeah, so it's so, down between Corey Coleman, Justin Ross, and Doris Fountain for the last slot. Absolutely. So here's what I'm thinking. If they think that Justin Ross is ready uh, physically and mentally to go ahead and jump in in the NFL, he gets that spot. Um, if they think that he needs a little more time to recoup, Corey Coleman gets the spot. Uh, that's where I'm at with it. I don't think that Doris Fountain is a lock, uh, despite what others say. He very well could make the team. Don't get me wrong. I don't think that's far-fetched or crazy to say that, but uh, I think I'm leaning more towards Justin Ross than the, than any of the other two. And then after Justin Ross, if they don't think he's ready to go, I'm going to give that nod to Corey Coleman. Okay, I think I would give the nod to Fountain over Coleman, but only well, slightly and only because of the special teams thing. That's well, where I, mean, I would stand on that. Here's what you got with, with that matchup right there. Dries Fountain gives you uh, knowing the playbook, the experience, and the special team stuff. Corey Coleman gives you round one talent. Like, he was an elite talent when he came out. He still has that talent. It's not like he got ran in the ground anywhere. They didn't even use him in, in Cleveland. But obviously, Cleveland don't do receivers very well either because look at OBJ. He went there, couldn't even get anything going. And then the minute he gets traded to L.A., he's a force again. So, I mean, I don't hold that against Corey Coleman. I think that he's got a lot of talent. And apparently he was impressing, uh, you know, during the OTAs and everything. So, um, I'm going to give that nod to Corey Coleman, but yeah, you can give it to fountain. Let's go ahead. And it we'll really say- does it, it. They're both kind of battling for the, the sixth spot though. Is, is Justin Ross, is he's the lock? Is that the one we're going to say? I mean, he's not a lock lock, but are we giving it to Justin Ross as the sixth? It's Hardman, MVS, Juju, Moore, Gordon. You've got one more spot. Are you giving it to Ross fountain or Coleman? Uh, okay. In that case, Ross, I, I think if Ross is ready to go physically, I think they give him that spot. I just think so we give got, it to Ross and yeah. we take six. So, okay. So to recap this, we have two quarterbacks, one fullback, four wide receivers. So that's, uh, that's six and seven. We have six wide receivers. So that's 13 players. We have four tight ends. That's 17. And then we took nine offensive linemen. That is 26 offensive players. You do have to have somewhere between 25 and 27. So that is the magical spot. Now, what we'll have to do is on the next episode, come back with the defense. And then you got to start blurring the lines. Is this defensive player more valuable than this offensive player we could? And then you may be able to slide a seventh wide receiver in or a 10th offensive lineman. That might be rare to do a fifth running back. I mean, some of that seems a little crazy, but this is what, Veach and companies having to do, you know, and it's a tough job, man. Yeah, guys, thanks for watching today. Uh, if you guys have any 
opinions on who's going to make this team, who's not going to make it, put it down in the comments so we can talk about it. If you think anything that we said is just far-fetched and stupid, tell us we're dumb in the comments. We'll talk about it. Uh, I do want you guys just to go ahead and uh, mark this one down. If we hear any big news, you know, coming up with the Chiefs as far as trades go, look out for a trade for Robert Quinn from Chicago. Look out for maybe a play on Saquon. I think that's the two right there that you might see before camp if there is one. So uh, go ahead and keep that in mind. If you guys think there's any other trades on the horizon, go ahead and put that down in the comments as well. Also, I still think, uh, I know in Dominic and Sue, I've been saying, hey, man, let's get him in the middle down every Chris, Chris Jones on a one year. Why not? Uh, someone actually left a comment on the last video and said that he signed with the Bucks a week ago. I have no idea where they heard that at. He's not signed with anybody, um, but he did post on Twitter something about the Raiders sounding good. So uh, I could see a dirty player I've, going to the Raiders. I've been uh, saying that you for You called weeks. that. Yeah, you called that. But uh, I would be happy if we, we could grab him too. I want somebody in there with Jones, man. I, I want to I free Jones up a little bit from those double teams and, yeah. and well, let him eat. Hey, that's a good – you know, we're going to talk about that next time. Part two is coming. It's going to be the defense. We're going to go through that roster. Um, if you guys are listening on Spotify, thanks so much. Be sure to give us a review. And, um, yeah, man, this just about wraps it up. Like, the offense, we're carrying a lot of skill players in here. So, this roster it looks pretty deep and good, to be honest. I'm kind of excited, Steve. Absolutely. It's definitely an exciting year for to be a Chiefs fan. There's a, a little bit of a shift going on. We're going into phase two of Patrick Mahomes' career, so this is cool, and we're all watching it happen. It's going to be very exciting. So uh, if you guys like the video, make sure to like the video, subscribe, hit the notification bell. That way you can know when we come out with more, and we'll be back to talk about the defense. So thanks for joining us, and we'll see you next time. See you.